بسم الله صلوا على محمد وآل محمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم
لا
اللهم إني أسألك قليلا من كثير مع حاجة بي إليه عظيما وغناك عنه قديم وهو عندي كثير وهو عليك سهل يسير اللهم إن عفوك عن ذنبي وتجاوزك عن خطيئتي وصفحك عن ظلمي وسترك على قبيح عملي وحلمك عن كثير جرمي عندما كان من خطئي وعمدي أطمعني في أن أسألك ما لا أستوجبه منك الذي رزقتني من رحمتك وأريتني من قدرتك وعرفتني من إجابتك فصرت أدعوك آمنا وأسألك مستأنسا لا خائفا ولا وجلا مدلا عليك فيما قصدت فيه إليك فإن أبطأ عني عتبت بجهلي عليك ولعل الذي أبطأ عني هو خير لي لعلمك بعاقبة فلم أر مولا كريما أصبر على عبد الليم منك علي يا رب إنك تدعوني فأولي عنك وتتحبب إلي فأتبغض إليك وتتودد إلي فلا أقبل منك كأن لي التطول عليك فلم يمنع كذلك من الرحمة لي والإحسان إليك والتفضل علي بجودك فارحم عبدك الجاهل وجد عليه بفضل إحسانك إنك جواد كريم الحمد لله مالك الملك مجر الفلك مسخر الرياح خالق الإصباح ديان الدين رب العالمين الحمد لله على حلمه بعد علمه والحمد لله على عفوه بعد قدرته والحمد لله على طول أناته في غضبه وهو قادر على ما يريد الحمد لله خالق الخلق باسط الرزق خالق الإصباح ذي الجلال والإكرام والفضل والإنعام <تصفيق> الذي بعد فلا يرى وقربا فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى 
الحمد لله الذي ليس له منازع يعادله ولا شبيه يشاكله ولا ظهير يعاضده قهر بعزته الأعزاء وتواضع لعظمته العظماء فبلغ بقدرته ما يشاء الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين أنادي ويستر علي كل عورة وأنا أعصي ويعظم النعمة علي فلا أجازي فكم من موهبة هنيئة قد أعطاني وعظيمة مخوفة قد كفاني وبهجة مونقة قد أراني فأثني عليه حامدا وأذكره مسبحا الحمد لله الذي لا يهتك حجابه ولا يغلق بابه ولا يرد سائله ولا يخيب آمله الحمد لله الذي يؤمن الخائفين وينجي الصالحين ويرفع المستضعفين ويضع المستكبرين ويهلك ملوكا ويستخلف آخرين والحمد لله قاصم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الهاربين نكال الظالمين صريخ المستصرخين موضع حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين الحمد لله الذي من خشيته ترعد السماء وسكانها وترجف الأرض وعمارها وتموج البحار ومن يسبح في غمراتها الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي يخلق ولم يخلق ويرزق ولا يرزى ويطعم ولا يطعم ويميت الأحياء ويحيي الموتى وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وأمينك وصفيك وحبيبك وخيرتك من خلقك وحافظ سرك ومبلغ رسالاتك أفضل وأحسن وأجمل وأكمل وأسكى وأنمى وأطيب وأطهر وأسنى وأكثر ما صليت وبارك 
وترحمت وتحنت وسلمت على أحد من عبادك وأنبيائك ورسلك وصفوتك وأهل الكرامة عليك من خلقك اللهم وصل على علي أمير المؤمنين ووصي رسول رب العالمين عبدك ووليك وأخي رسولك وحجتك على خلقك وآيتك الكبرى والنبأ العظيم وصل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة سيدة نساء العالمين وصل على صدقي الرحمة وإمامي الهدى الحسن والحسين سيدي شباب أهل الجنة وصل على أئمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي حججك على عباده وأمنائك في بلاده صلاة كثيرة دائما اللهم وصل على ولي أمرك القائم المؤمل والعدل المنتظر وحفه بملائكتك المقربين وأيده بروح القدس يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعله الداعي إلى كتابه والقائمة بدينك استخلفه في الأرض كما استخلفت الذين من قبله مكن له دينه الذي ارتضيته لا أبدله من بعد خوفه أمنا يعبدك لا يشرك بك شيئا اللهم أعزه وأعزز به وانصره وانتصر به وانصره نصرا عزيزا وافتح له فتحا يسيرا واجعل له من لدنك سلطانا نصيرا اللهم أظهر به دينك وسنة نبيك حتى لا يستخفي بشيء من الحق مخافة أحد من الخلق اللهم إنا نرغب إليك في دولة كريمة تعز بها الإسلام وأهله وتذل بها النفاق وأهله وتجعلنا فيها من الدعاة إلى طاعتك والقادة 
وترزقنا بها كرامة الدنيا والآخرة اللهم ما عرفتنا من الحق فحملنا وما قصرنا عنه فبلغنا اللهم المم به شعثنا وشعب به صدعنا وارتق به فتقنا وكثر به قلتنا وأعزز به ذلتنا وأغن به عائلنا واقض به عن مغرمنا واجبر به فقرنا وسد به خلتنا ويسر به عسرنا وبيض به وجوهنا وفك به أسرنا وأنجح به طلبتنا وأنجز به مواعيدنا واستجب به دعوتنا وأعطنا به سؤلنا وبلغنا به من الدنيا والآخرة آمالنا وأعطنا به فوق رغبتنا يا خير اشف به صدورنا واذهب به غيظ قلوبنا واهدنا به لما اختلف فيه من الحق باذنك انك تهدي من تشاء الى صراط مستقيم وانصرنا به على عدوك وعدونا إله الحق آمين اللهم إنا نشكو إليك فقد نبينا صلواتك عليه وآله وغيبة ولينا وكثرة وقلة عددنا وشدة الفتن بنا وتظاهر الزمان علينا فصل على محمد وآله وأعنا على ذلك بفتح منك تعجله وبضر تكشفه ونصر تعزه وسلطان حق تظهره ورحمة منك تجللنا وعافية منك تلبسنا برحمتك يا أرحم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم برحمتك في الصالحين فأدخلنا وفي عليين فارفعنا وبكأس من معين من عين سلسبيل فاسقنا ومن الحور العيد برحمتك فزوجنا ومن الولدان المخلدين كأن 
إنهم لؤلؤ مكنون فأخدمنا ومن ثمار الجنة ولحوم الطير فأطعمنا ومن ثياب السندس والحرير والاستبرقي فألبسنا وليلة القاد وحج بيتك الحرام وقتلا في سبيلك فوفق لنا وصالح الدعاء والمسألة فاستجب لنا وإذا جمعت الأولين والآخرين يوم القيامة فارحمنا وبراءة من النار فاكتب لنا وفي جهنم فلا تغلنا وفي عذابك وهوانك فلا تبتلنا ومن الزقوم والضريع فلا تطعمنا ومع الشياطين فلا تجعلنا وفي النار على وجوهنا فلا تكبرنا ومن ثياب النار وسرابيل القطران فلا تلبسنا ومن كل سوء يا لا إله إلا أنت بحق لا إله إلا أنت فنجنا اللهم إني أسألك أن تجعل فيما تقضي وتقدر من الأمر المحتوم في الأمر الحكيم من القضاء الذي لا يرد ولا يبدل أن تكتبني من حجاج بيتك الحرام المبرور حجهم المشكور سعيهم المغفور ذنوبهم المكفر عن سيئاتهم وأن تجعل فيما تقضي وتقدر أن تطيل عمري في خير وعافية وتوسع في رزقي وتجعلني ممن تنتصر به لدينك ولا تستبدل بغيري أعوذ بجلال وجهك الكريم أن ينقضي عني شهر رمضان يطلع الفجر من ليلتي هذا ولك قبلي تبعة أو ذنب تعذبني عليه إلهي وقف السائلون ببابك ولا ذا وقفت سفينة المساكين على ساحل بحر جودك وكرمك يرجون الجواز 
إلى ساحة رحمتك ونعمتك إلهي إن كنت لا ترحم في هذا الشهر الشريف إلا من أخلص لك في صيامه وقيامه فمن للمذنب المقصر إذا غرق في بحر ذنوبه وآثامه إلهي إن كنت لا ترحم إلا المطيعين فمن للعاصين وإن كنت لا تقبل إلا من العاملين فمن للمقصرين إلهي ربحا فاز القائمون ونجى المخلصون ونحن عبيدك المذنبون فارحمنا برحمتك واعتقنا من النار بعفوك يا كريم يا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد يا خازن الليل يا خازن الليل في النهار وخازن النور في السماء ومانع السماء أن تقع على الأرض إلا بإذنه وحابسهما أن تزولا يا عليم يا عظيم يا غفور يا دائم يا الله يا وارث من في القبور يا الله يا الله يا الله لك الأسماء الحسنى والأمثال العليا والكبرياء والآلاء أسألك أن تصلي على محمد وآل محمد وأن تجعل اسمي في هذه الليلة في السعداء وروحي مع الشهداء وإحساني في علين وإساءتي مغفورا وأن تهب لي يقينا تباشر به قلبي وإيمانا يذهب الشك عني وترضيني بما قسمت لي وآتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار الحريق وارزقني فيها ذكرك وشكرك والرغبة إليك والإنابة والتوبة والتوفيق لما وفقت له محمدا وآل محمد صلى الله عليه اللهم إنك قلت في كتابك المنزل شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان 
فعظمت حرمة شهر رمضان بما أنزلت فيه من القرآن وخصصته بليلة القاد وجعلتها خيرا من ألف شاه اللهم وهذه أيام شهر رمضان قد انقضت ولياليه قد تصرمت وقصرت يا إلهي منه إلى ما أنت أعلم به مني وأحصى لعدده من الخلق أجمعين فأسألك بما سألك به ملائكتك المقربون وأنبياؤك المرسلون وعبادك الصالحون أن تصلي على محمد وآل محمد وأن تفك رقبتي من النار وتدخلني الجنة برحمتك وأن تتفضل علي بعفوك وكرمك وتتقبل تقربي وتستجيب دعائي وتمن علي بالأمن يوم الخوف من كل هول أعددته ليوم القيامة إلهي وأعوذ بوجهك الكريم وبجلالك العظيم أن ينقضي أيام شهر رمضان ولياني ولك قبلي تبعة أو ذنب تآخذني به أو خطيئة تريد أن تقتصها مني لم تغفرها لي سيدي 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 أسألك يا لا إله إلا أنت إذ لا إله إلا أنت إن كنت رضيت عني في هذا الشاه فازدد عني رضاه وإن لم تكن رضيت عني فمن الآن فرض عني يا أرحم الراحمين يا الله يا أحد يا صمد يا من لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد يا ملين الحديد لداود عليه السلام يا كاشف الضر والكرب العظام عن أيوب عليه السلام أي مفرج هم يعقوب عليه السلام أي منفس غم يوسف عليه السلام صل على محمد وآل محمد كما أنت أهله أن تصلي عليهم أجمعين وفعل بي ما أنت أهله ولا تفعل بي ما أنا أهله يا ملين الحديد لداود عليه السلام يا كاشف الضر والكر بالعظام عن أيوب عليه السلام أي مفرج هجر يعقوب عليه السلام أي منفذ غم يوسف عليه السلام 
صل على محمد وآل محمد كما أنت أهله أن تصلي عليهم أجمعين وافعل بما أنت أهله ولا تفعل بما أنا أهله يا ملين الحديد لداود عليه السلام يا كاشف الضر والكرب العظام عن أيوب عليه السلام أي مفرج هم يعقوب عليه السلام أي منفس غم يوسف عليه السلام صل على محمد وآل محمد كما أنت أهله أن تصلي عليهم أجمعين وافعل بما أنت أهله ولا تفعل بما أنا أهله صل يا رب على محمد وآله Haj Hasnin Rajabali, Haj Abatar Al Halawachi, respected elders, brothers, and sisters. Salaamu Alaikum. Surah Al Fatiha is requested for the Salih Sawab of Marhumin listed on the screen and for all Marhumin Al Fatiha. I am a Yujibu is requested for the names listed on the screen and for all those in need here and elsewhere. Let's recite together five times of my Yujibu. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Amma Yujibu al Mustarai Zada wa Yakshifu Sum. Amma yujibu al-mustarai zada wa yakshifu su 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 Ladies program, the ladies committee would like to remind all ladies to attend the discussion with Haj Hasnain Rajabali tonight, April 7th. This session shall take place in the ladies main hall after the main program. Solar eclipse. A total solar eclipse is expected in, in the Orlando area tomorrow, April 8th. Salat ayat is obligatory for, or for partial or full eclipse and must be performed any time after 1.46 p.m. and before 4.17 p.m. For more information and method to recite Salat ayat, Please refer to the weekly newsletter. Zakatul Fitra. We would like to inform all community members that collection of Zakatul Fitra has started at the masjid. Designated boxes are located at the main hall entrances of men's and ladies. The rate is $12 per head based 
on the going rate of staple food in Orlando. If paying zakat in advance, please do so with the intention of the payment to Masjid al Hay as the appointed agent to pay zakat al fitra on your behalf on the day of Eid. Please do not use any other donation box at the masjid for zakat al fitra which will be available till the start of Eid Salat. We also request that you only make cash payments allowing for immediate disbursement. Eid celebration. You are invited to celebrate Eid with us, a day filled with joy, laughter, and unity as we come together to mark the special occasion on Saturday, April 13th at 5 p.m. Activities include fun, fun games, mouth-watering food, and an unforgettable firework show to conclude the festivities. Don't miss out on this wonderful opportunity to create lasting memories with your family and friends. In the spirit of generosity and kindness, we kindly ask for your donations to support the event. Your contributions will help us make this celebration even more memorable for everyone. Please remember to sign up your family using the link displayed on the screen. Fly a Kite Aid Gaza. During the Eid celebration on Saturday, April 13th, we shall also have Fly a Kite, where you can purchase a kite and aid Gaza. 100% proceeds will go to those providing essential medical care to displaced children in Gaza. Ramadan sponsorship and donations. This Ramadan, there are many opportunities to support programs here at the Masjid, including sponsorship for Iftar, Tabarruk, Hadiya for the speakers, as well as a general Ramadan fund. We suggest a donation of $300 per family for the Ramadan fund. However, any amount is welcome. Our budget for the entire month is $153,400, which we have raised $84,164. We would like to thank all our sponsors for the support. Jazakallah. Please contact Brother Murtaza Karim or Sister Batul Mukhi at the number on the screen or Zell to donate at masjidalhay.org or go to our website payment center to make donation. At this time, I would like to call Hajj Hasnain Rajabali to give tonight's lecture with a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي أنزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرة والصلاة والسلام على خير خلق ونور عرش أفضل الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيبنا وسيدنا وسندنا وشفيعنا ومولانا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المأسومين المظلومين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتاب المجيد وقوله الحق وهو أستق الصادقين الله نزل أحسن الحديث كتابا متشابها مثانيا تقشعر منه جلود الذين يغشون ربهم ثم تلين جلودهم وقلوبهم إلى ذكر الله 
zalika hudallah yahdi bihi man yasha wa man yudlil lillah fama lahu min had sadaqallahu alaliyyul azim salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad all praise belongs to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i begin in his blessed name and we all thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guiding us not only internally in ourselves for allah is merciful that when he perfected the self allah said wa nafsim wa ma sawaha fa alhamaha fujuraha wa taqwaha and by the self which he completed and made it correct and perfect he taught it wrong and right that consciousness we have within us where we know what evil is and when we know what good is when we are repulsed by people who lie and cheat and hurt and are arrogant there is an intrinsic nature built within us as the moral argument in fact researchers did a fantastic study at harvard where they took infants that were just born to to validate that is the moral template the human being develops is it an evolutionary process that we develop due to social constructs and therefore we build the system of right and wrong based on archetypes taught to us in society or is it something that is built in us at birth when allah says wa nafsin wa ma sawaha fa alhamaha fujuraha wa taqwaha he completed the self he taught it wrong and right and they did a study and they took infants and they showed them moral images and immoral images and the results were astounding that every child looked towards the moral image and avoided the immoral image now the probability stipulates that children should be dangling in both directions but every child was looking towards the moral direction like as if they knew what is wrong and what is right even at birth this is the blessing of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that allah has given us an internal prophet but logic dictates that we need an external prophet and this is where atheism fails atheism stipulates that the internal system is sufficient but it is not sufficient just like my desire for hunger hunger is a natural reality my curiosity is a natural reality which demands an external fulfillment for how do i satiate my hunger if i don't eat something external to me how do i fulfill my curiosity of knowing if i don't acquire knowledge outside of me so the nature of a relationship between the inner and the outer is a given so anybody who denies such facts is myopic to use the proper word myopia meaning closed minded tunnel visioned refusing to accept what is natural and true thus when we argue you know when i listen to some agnostics and atheists tell me that you know you are leaning on the quran as a book it's just a fable and so on i said well you haven't read it and logic dictates that if the quran is not the guidance then what is bring me something better if you can logic dictates that we all have a trajectory of wanting something that is absolutely the best look at the rational logic in life if somebody offers me something good and then they also offer me something better if not the best both are good and you're being offered which sane human being will take the former when there is a better but both are good so why would you take the better because logic dictates within us within our own fitra that always go for the best for that is how life should work therefore when we look at writings of people even shakespeare's works and you know iliad of homer these are genius works when it comes to writing in language but when it comes to moral standards nothing can compare with the quran and therefore when we hold on to the quran it is not because we are muslims 
It is because there is nothing better in the world, therefore we are Muslims. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. It's very important, what I just stated is very important because if you ever get into discussions and debates with people, people will argue on this. In fact, in the, in the institutions of academia that lacks the moral drive generally because they're trying to be very objective and supposedly pretending to be non-subjective, but it is impossible for the natural biases of subjectivity with objectivity is part and parcel of life. There is no such thing as pure empirical scientific objectivity without any kind of bias. Even people like Stephen Hawking, who was an atheist, a pronounced atheist, listen to what he says. In his book, A Brief History of Time, he says prior to Planck's moment, which is when the Big Bang took place, we cannot talk about it scientifically for all the tools of science cease to exist at that moment. Therefore, it would be presumptuous of us to talk about what happened prior to Planck's moment because we don't have the instruments with which to speak about it. And he's, he's honest and he's correct. He's correct. In pure empirical science, what he says is correct. Here's something he mentions, interestingly, as an atheist. He said, but philosophers can certainly talk about what happened before for they have the power to speculate outside the world of science, implying that there is another world superior to empirical observation called philosophy, which enables us to speculate or to use existential evidence to understand the future and the past. And therefore we can discuss pre-Planck's uh, moment because philosophy allows you that. And he admits that, interestingly. And then in his series about the universe, it is called the elegant universe. Now when I first saw that, I had a smile on my face. I said pure atheism, which is very utilitarian, cannot use the word elegant. It's outside the principles of science for elegance is a philosophical term. <laughs> so notice even scientists use philosophy to make sense because at the end of the day, if you watch something and you said, oh wow, how beautiful it is. Well, that's not science. That's a subjective com commentary. Allah says, خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ بِغَيْرِ عَمَدٍ تَرَوْنَهَا we made the skies without pillars that you can see. We created the heavens without pillars that you can see. We raised mountains on the earth, for as you know, the earth is egg-shaped. It's not a perfect sphere and it spins at a very high speed, and if it were not balanced, it would convulse, it would bounce. Just like when you take a ball and you spin it, if any part of that ball is defective, the entire ball will wobble. But Allah says we raise mountains to balance it, lest it should convulse. And then we bring the clouds and we bring rain on the earth, and the belly of the earth expands. And all kinds of vegetation grows. Right? In Surah Al-Mulk, Allah says, Allah says, How beautiful the words. We have made seven heavens, one on top of the other. Do you see any cracks in it? مَا تَرَى فِي خَلْقِ الرَّحْمَانِ مِنْ تَفَاوُتِ فَرْجِعِ الْبَصَرِ Return and look at it again. Meaning Allah is now encouraging us to be scientists, to be empiricists. فَرْجِعِ الْبَصَرِ Go look, examine, measure it. Then Allah asks us, هَلْ تَرَى مِنْ فُطُورِ do you see any cracks in it? Do you see any fissures in it? 
or do you see a continuous flow of incredible energy? Even Einstein said, we are ignorant with the artifacts. There is no error in the universe. And a person... Allah says, do you see any? Allah says, you will come back tired and dazzled. I was reading a, an astronomer who was describing her observation of the universe. And she said, I am tired and dazzled. And she did not read the Quran. Quran said, you will come back tired and dazzled as to how beautiful it is. Then Allah says, وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَّ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَصَابِيحَ وَجَعَلْنَاهَا رُجُومًا لِلشَّيَاطِينَ وَعَتَدْنَا لَهُمْ عَذَابَ السَّعِيرِ In Surah Al-Mulk, we have adorned the lower heavens with lamps and made it very beautiful. زَيَّنَّ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا You know, in the night time when you see those stars, I remember one time I was at the camp and I could see the Milky Way. It was so bright, I, could, I felt like I could touch it. And I swear to Allah on this pulpit, I didn't want to close my eyes. I didn't want to sleep. I wanted to look at it forever. It was the most magnificent sight I ever held. And I was in awe. And I just said, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. My Lord, how great you are. That that which I see is only that which has penetrated this atmosphere with its light. But beyond this, in fact, if you if all the stars were to emit their light, you would see nothing but whiteness in the sky in the nighttime. But because of, you know, the allocation of light that reaches the earth, it creates these sparkling stars. And Allah describes that. The Quran has over 600 verses that allude to scientific observations. But at the end of the day, it's not the scientific observation, but exactly what Stephen Hawking said when he said an elegant universe. Meaning you're giving value after your observation. Allah in the Quran says, وَلَئِن سَأَلْتَمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ لَيَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ قُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ بَلْ أَكْثَرْهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ When they are asked who created the universe, Allah says, they will tell you Allah. Allah says, say glory be to Allah. How little you understand. Meaning give it value. Don't just observe it. Give it value. Look at it and give it value and give value to the maker. For that is true worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we look at each other and we say, subhanallah, fatabarakallah ahsan al khaliqeen alladhi when you and I say that, that Allah creates perfectly, how beautiful is Allah's creation. And we say, Subhanallah, Fatabarakallah, Ahsana. Allah says, You are truly worshipping me for what I have created in your wildest imagination. You cannot replicate it, not even an insect. And I mentioned this example. When you look at insects, just look at the way they work, tiny little legs, and there are trillions of them, trillions. In fact, some say quadrillions. The insect kingdom is the largest kingdom on earth. It can occupy the entire world. That's how large it is. Each little insect knows exactly what to do. I've mentioned this in an example, just quick passing. I watched an insect climb up carrying 10 times its weight. And I've mentioned this in my previous lectures in this month in Ramadan, but I repeat it just for us to understand the value of God's incredible system. This is Rahma. You want to achieve Taqwa? Indulge in this. Constantly look around and see nothing but Allah. See His mastery. And when you say an elegant universe, Allah says exactly. So what are you going to do about it? Are you going to deny me? Hmm? Which of my bounties will you belie me for? In Surah Rahman, Allah repeats it 31 times. Why 31 times? Allah says, you are forgetful. 
Allah says, فَذَكِّرْ إِنْ نَفْعَةِ الذِّكْرَ سَيَذَّكَّرُ مَنْ يَخْشَى وَيَتَجَنَّبُهَا الْأَشْقَى الَّذِي يَصْلُ النَّارُ الْكُبْرَى ثُمَّ لَا يَمُوتُ فِيهَا وَلَا يَحْيَى I address especially to my young brothers and sisters who are teenagers who are so occupied with the glitter of this world chasing mundane things I want you to sit down and relax and focus and pay attention with meditation that what God has given us is beyond expression. When Allah said, وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَّ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَسَابِيحَ وَجَعَلْنَاهَا رُجُومًا لِلشَّيَاتِينَ Look at how beautiful that verse is. Allah says, we strike the shayateen. Why is Allah striking shayateen? It has many meanings, by the way. It is actually about the jinns also. But the physical state of the canopy on earth that protects us from meteors, meaning when we see those falling stars, stars, by the way, don't fall. Stars don't fall. We call it falling star because it appears like a star is falling. It's not a star falling. It's a meteor entering our atmosphere and Allah burns it. And as the meteor burns, the Prophet said, recite salawat because that is the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salawat. Meaning that canopy is protecting us for were that meteor to enter the atmosphere, it would cause tremendous damage. In fact, we believe that the reason the dinosaurs disappeared on this earth was because a large meteor entered our atmosphere and caused a drastic change in the atmosphere and the climate became very cold, which killed many, many species on earth. This is a scientific theory, which has quite a bit of evidence in that. But Allah says that I protect it. زَيَّنَّ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَصَابِيحَا وَجَعَلْنَاهَا رُجُومًا لِلشَّيَاطِينَ Now, shayateen here is anything that harms you, meaning the bacteria that can hurt us, the Prophet said, those are shayateen. What does it mean? Shaytan, the root word shatana, is that which harms you. Anything that harms you in Arabic, they're usually called shaytan or shayateen, which is plural. So the messenger said, don't let your mustache cross your lip line because shayateen live on the edge of your lips and don't, in other words, peripherate it. Keep it short and clean so you keep less of the shayateen. Now you would think shayateen, you would think that, you know, the devils and the jinns are hanging on my, on my mustache. That's not what, what it is. It is, the Prophet is using the real example of something that is harmful that you yet have to know. Because as you know, we discovered bacteria and the hidden stuff later on under Louis van Hoek. And of course, as you know, the famous flask, which then found out that there are hidden agents around us that float. The Quran is talking about this. You notice I'm indulging quite a bit in science tonight. Because I want us to understand, in the verse that I recited, Allah says, Allah has revealed, this is in Surah Al-Zumar, verse 23, meaning the 39th chapter, 23rd verse, for those of you who want to know. Allah says, Allah has revealed the best announcement, meaning the Quran is an announcement. Allahu nazzal ahsan al-hadith. This Quran is an announcement, a book conformable in its various parts. This is very important. كِتَابٌ مُتَشَابِيًا مَثَانِيَا تَقْشَعِرُ Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says every verse, every chapter is conformable with others. Meaning it's all one big structure and each piece is the part of the other. You touch one, the other one reacts. Just like the universe. It's amazing to me, fascinating studying science, that, you know, when we talk about relative physics and we look at speed of light, which is what Einstein was proposing in his theory of relativity, that there is another force called quantum physics. And in quantum world, it defies the speed of light. And that power is so incredible that the spin on a, of an electron and an atom on this side of the universe is communicating with the other side of the universe instantaneously. This has been proven in science. Meaning that the universe is alive 
subconscious talking to each other and each one is relatable and it cannot be disconnected. That means what I do and what I press and what I say and me sitting on this pulpit talking to every one of you, I am causing waves in the universe and your reflection of it and your absorption of it and the palpitation of your hearts towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in consciousness is also causing waves in the universe and the atomic particles that are making us up are also reacting even on the other side of the universe and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that in the Quran that when you are reflective I sent angels to you in the battle of Badr Allah says if you have taqwa I will send you 5,000 angels for each of you to help you in Surah Al-Zumar, the same Surah I'm reciting, Allah says, every time you remember me, I have angels that do dhikr on your behalf, for you are triggering the buttons in the right direction. So you want to expand this scientific reality into the world of the esoteric, into the supernatural world. It is so obviously clear that even scientists today, as I mentioned, consider that this universe right now is what they call panpsychic, meaning the universe is entirely aware and even the sun, the moon, everything recognizes Allah and it is so alive that if you could understand that, that just by touching a piece of wood and mentioning the name of Allah, you can move mountains. You might think this is spurious fable talk, but it is not. For Allah mentions this in the Quran, Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. He says, conformable in its various parts, repeating. Notice the Quran is repetitious. Why is it repeating? Because Allah wants us to remember. Allah is making it easy by repeating. And Allah says, فَذَكِّرْ إِنْ نَفَعَتِ الذِّكْرَ Remind them. Reminding is beneficial. When you get on a pulpit, and you know, it's interesting when someone says, Brother, I've heard that already. You know, you've lectured that. I've heard that already. So I look at them and I said, So what have you done about it? Was it just supposed to go through one ear and out the other? And now you have a witness that you heard it? Or was it heard for a reason? So yesterday when I mentioned the verse in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna hadha al-Qur'an yahdi lillati hiya aqwam. This Quran guides you to that which is most upright. Allah says, Wa yubashiru al-mu'mineen al-ladheena ya'maluna al-salihat. Give good news to the believers who do good as a result of what the Quran said. And for them is a great reward. That means Islam is very practical. They don't say, I heard it. Say, I applied it. Otherwise, you are stepping in the areas of ignorance. When a human being says, oh, I heard that already. I look at them, I say, so what are you going to do about it? Bravo that you heard it. Why is it when you play basketball, you put the ball in the goal already? Why do you keep doing it? Are you crazy? How about when you play soccer, you kicked it in the goal. Stop it. It's done. The person says, are you crazy? The more I do, the better I get. It's perfection. So why is that perfection and not the repetition of the Quran? Please answer my question and I beg to understand that. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. It's foolish. Allah is so merciful. He says, give good news to the one who does it. And you know when you do it, you love to hear it. You know, when you, you know, when someone says something nice to you, you're so beautiful. You say, really? Oh, thank you. You know, we human beings, the most pleasant sound to the human being is our own names. When somebody mentions our names, we look, you called me? Because the ego loves to be caressed. Nothing wrong with it. It's beautiful. When you and I love to hear our own names, don't feel ashamed. Allah is telling you how beautiful you are. I shaped you. 
I made you special and your fingerprint is so unique in the world. You are so special that if you like to hear your name, keep hearing it. Just don't become arrogant. Thank Allah for hearing it. So we love to hear our names. So when people say something beautiful about us, don't we love to hear it? We, we save it. Somebody said a nice thing about me. I'm going to save this in my phone today with the phone, you know, and I'm going to replay it all the time. So why do you replay it? You say, I heard it already. Come on, stop it. No, 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 please repeat it. <laughs> so I say, Quran and the lectures of Hidayah should have a different attitude. To say, oh my God, I heard that. Can you please say it again? Because it brings joy to my ears. Now that's Islam. People say, I pray every day. I recite Surah Al-Fatiha 10 times. I've recited it already. But when you're in love with it, can you ever stop reading it? You want more of it. That's the love relationship we're talking about, taqwa. The taqwa is the repetition of the same thing. They say, Imam Rada alayhi salatu wa salam, salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Just as an example, that's so beautiful. You know, he was made heir apparent to Mamun. Mamun wanted to trap him. So the Imam calls a group of scholars, you know, I mean, khutaba. There was one khatib. He said, tell me the story of Ashura, the maktal. So the khatib starts to speak, you know, how Imam Hussain leaves Medina and he goes towards the Kaaba. And then from there he goes to... So the Imam is holding a handkerchief and he's crying. The Khatib spends about an hour describing the whole story of Karbala until the Shahada of Imam Hussein. After he finishes, Imam looks at him and says, repeat it. The Khatib says, Ya ibn Rasulillah, I just recited. He said, start again. And the Khatib starts again. And the Imam keeps crying. Love! It's a love relationship. You can't stop hearing the story of Karbala. People say Majlis of Imam Hussein has been recited. Read it a thousand times. My grandfather used to tell me, my father told me, he said, whenever you speak, always speak about the event of Karbala. Repeat it infinitely, for there is the means by which we connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today a brother came to me and said, my love for Imam Sahib al-Zaman, ajallahu ta'ala faraja, is so important. He said, let's talk about him. He's the, he's the Imam al-Hujjah. He's our, our modern Imam. And I, I looked at him and I was so happy. I said, how beautiful it is to meet a brother who loves our living Imam. Many of us have, you know, doubts. We're ambivalent about it because especially the young generation, they say, where is he? We can't see him. Remember him. The Prophet said, afdalu al-ibadah in tadar al-mahdi. The best form, one of the best forms of ibadah is the intadar of your Mahdi. Why? Because it shapes you. You know, it's like when you have a love relationship and you love that person who is yet to come to land and come to you. But you want to know how do they dress, what do they say, what's their favorite food, what do they like, what, they, what don't they like. You said, why? He said, because I love this person so much, I want to eat the same thing this person eats. I want to dress the way this person dresses. I want to like what this person likes. That in Tadar, we, the lovers of Ahl al-Bayt, are the most blessed people in the world to have. Nobody has it. Listen to religions, even people of other schools of thought. They are not connected. I had an employee from Tunisia. He said, I know you are Shia. He said, you know how we know the Shia in Tunisia? I said, how do you know? He's a very good brother, excellent. He was working for me from, from the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama. He said, we recognize them after Salah, they read a lot of dua. They cry to God. We don't do that. He said, but you Shias do that. You're connected. You go to the graves of Ahl al-Bayt. You're connected. It's interesting. You know, they say, don't go to the graves. It is shirk. How nonsensical is that? If that is the case, then Allah commanding the angels to bow to Adam is the greatest shirk. <laughs> and Iblis refused. So any Muslim who refuses to obey the agents of God is like Iblis. They claim to be Muwahideen. 
that we worship only God. Allah says, you fools, I commanded them. I place them. They are your means and shafa towards me. I put the messenger as a means and a shafa. When you remember them and follow them, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ If you claim to love Allah, then obey me. Why obey me? Why not just love Allah? Allah says, what is your transaction of love if you don't have an agency like that I represent that walks and talks my lingo? So when we go to the graves, even in Sutul Kaf, when they woke up 300 years later, they decided to leave this world and they all went to sleep and died and they built a masjid over their graves. Allah mentions this in the Quran and Allah honors this masjid. The Messenger of Allah is buried inside the masjid. What was his wisdom in burying himself inside the masjid? And those who are against it, their khalifas are buried inside the masjid. How dare they question the integrity of the very agencies of God when they themselves honor the graves. When I was in Medina, you saw these red-haired creatures, you know, that look like Martians holding sticks that came from nowhere half-brained creatures, you know, programmed like some criminals, you know, completely brainwashed, angry because you should not fall in love with the Prophet. And I'm watching from far, and I'm looking, the majority who are from the other schools of thought, dying to touch the grave of the Prophet. I said, they haven't been indoctrinated. They didn't come from that madness you call the Rafidis. Why do they love? Yeah, because when you love someone, you want to hug them. You love the Quran, you hug it and you kiss it. You, people used to love to hug the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Since when did it become wrong? They want to disconnect us. But the beauty of Islam is the intadar, that when we remember just like the Quran, repeat it, repeat it, talk about it. People say, how is the Imam benefiting us? I ask them, and this is interesting, did you ever notice, by the way, we have debates about the existence of God? All the time, atheists do that. Why? Well, because we can't see him. Hmm, interesting. I say, why don't we debate about the devil? He can't be seen either. Do people have any kind of organized debate on the existence of the devil? But everybody has no problem believing in him. Even non-believers. The devil made me do that. I say, where is he? Since when did you get such clarity of thought? Why don't you have debates about that? Why are you not an agnostic about the devil? Nobody has a problem with the devil. Do you notice that? And then when something goes wrong, we are so quick in throwing it on the devil who can't be seen. I smile. I said, you have no problem giving your problems to him. But you have a problem with the agency of God called Imam Sahib Zaman doing good for you when he is not visible. I think that's biased and contradictory. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. It's interesting. So when people say, where is the Imam? I say, where is the devil? The Imam is a, is a ni'mah who doesn't need to be seen. He guides and he brings agencies. There's a beautiful story about Rajbali Khayyat. He says a man wanted to meet Imam Sahib al-Zaman alayhi salatu wasalam. And he, he was told, go to Masjid al-Sahla for 40 nights and do a'mal and recite. And there's a riwayat, by the way. If you read the 17th chapter of the Quran, Surah Isra, you will meet the living Imam. And I'm a firm believer in this. Look, I'm very scientific. I'm very evidence-based. I'm very methodical when it comes to my belief systems. This is not whimsical talk. And anybody out there who thinks they're very, you know, ironclad scientists, welcome, I'd love to have a discussion with you on this matter. For it is crystal clear truth, that what I'm saying. But you need to mature and broaden your vision to understand what is to be said. For Allah says, When your Lord decreed that He's going to place on earth a Khalifa, Ja'ilun here means always. Never a time when the Khalifa is not on earth. It's a verse in the Quran, and Shaitan asks Allah, because He knew the Khalifa will always be on earth, and He wants to counter that Khalifa till the day of judgment. Hence, we know that the Khalifa of Allah is always on earth. 
Now Raj Bali Hayat gives a beautiful example of this person who, stand, who spent 40 nights in Masjid al-Sahla doing all the a'mal to see the Imam. Suddenly he goes to sleep and he's told in a dream, get on a bus and go to this distant city for you will meet the Imam there. So he leaves Masjid al-Sahla, travels a long distance. It takes him more than a day. He arrives exhausted. He arrives and he's told, go to the bazaar. He enters this bazaar, this is in the Islamic Republic, and he goes to this bazaar and he's told, go to this particular shop. So he goes, and he sees a young handsome man sitting, and a transaction takes place. And in the transaction, this locksmith was bargaining with an old woman who was selling her lock. And she comes to him and says, I have this lock I wish to sell, how much will you give me? And he offers her a good number, seven, seven or eight to man. And she said, all day I've been trying to sell this lock and nobody wants to give me more than two or three to man. Why are you giving me seven? The locksmith says, lady, that's the value of this lock. For if I gave you any less, I would be cheating you. Pay attention, brothers and sisters. This is Islam. It's not complicated. <laughs> so the woman gladly takes the seven to man, she walks away happy. That handsome man looks at this man who wanted to see the Imam. He says, you don't have to go to Masjid al-Sahla to see the representative of God. You have to be like that man, for Imams come and visit them. For that man is honest. He maintains the scale of God. We are so honored. I remember a brother came to me and said, my brother became shaheed in, in, in the Islamic Republic when he was fighting between Iran and Iraq. He was an Iraqi who was, became shaheed, he was killed. And he said, my mother clearly saw a dream. She had no idea that her son was killed in that war. She thought he's still alive, but she clearly saw him in the grave. And the next day, by the way, you know, the, the soldiers of the secret service came and told her that your son has been martyred. She said, I know. They said, how do you know? She said, last night I dreamt very clearly. I'm at the grave of my son doing Fatiha and a young handsome man was there. And I looked at him, I said, who are you reading Fatiha for my son? He said, I'm Hussein ibn Ali. Okay. He said, I am the son of the prophet and I've come to pay respects to this shaheed. So the Imam visits us. While it is so important for you and I to visit our Imams, it is important to do ziyarat and to go and touch the sarcophagi of those agencies of God. I remember when I went to see Ammar's grave, it was exposed. Until today, my love relationship with Ammar is special. Ammar ibn Yasser to me is special because I touched his grave, I spoke to him, he replied me. I have such a relationship. This is not fable talk. This is in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, remind them, touch it. The universe talks, the walls are talking, the carpet is talking, it's bearing witness to you. And none other than the Quran, which is the ultimate, Allah says, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا What we have revealed in this Quran is a shifa hmm? and a rahma. And the Quran does nothing to the disbeliever troublemakers but destruction. وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا It's beautiful. The Quran is effective. Not only does it protect me, but it fights the enemy and destroys them and exposes them. This is the month of Ramadan, brothers and sisters. This is the month this great book was revealed. Let us not be those that on judgment day when the Prophet said, Ya Rabbi, naqawm ittakhadu hadha al-Qur'ana mahjura. My Lord, my community ignored it. Let you and I not be that one that the Prophet is complaining about. Let you and I be a witness on judgment day, day to say, Ya Nabi, Ya Rasulullah, we heard you. We knew you are the Qur'an. We lived it and we died with it. And let 
let's make friends with the chapters so that on judgment day those magnificent creatures Imam Khomeini speaks about they come next to us and they become our friends and they hold us together and take us across into the high stations of paradise otherwise we are foolish people the trinkets that we have accumulated on this earth are beautiful but they cannot come with us and they are transient and they become old and they lose value Imam Ali alayhi salam says how tragic the human race busy accumulating wealth that when they spend it it depletes but knowledge when they acquire it it protects them whereas wealth they have to protect it and that this wealth of knowledge when they share it it grows but wealth when they share it it depletes he said how foolish you are mankind why don't you go in the right direction that brings the best results so in this conclusion i want to make the quran as allah says he says it is repeating where it do shudder the skin meaning your skin will sh shudder in the fear of allah then their skins and their hearts become pliant meaning it softens you start to cry you start to say oh my god i did this haram and i did that haram and what awaits me and Allah is telling me watch out be careful this is your shifa how many times do we focus on that Allah says become pliant to the remembrance of Allah meaning the heart becomes soft Allah says فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّ فَعْتِ الذِّكْرَ say ذَكْرُ مَنْ يَخْشَى who is yakhsha? the one whose heart is pliant the one who is ready to receive وَيَتَجَنَّبُ الْأَشْقَى the one who is arrogant who is a kafir who says I have nothing to do with with God I'm just going to keep acquiring my wealth because that's my security Allah says go for it go for it even if you have a billion dollars and the doctor says you're gonna to die tomorrow give him a billion in one dollars and see if he can make you live Allah says this is Allah's guidance he guides with it whom he pleases and as for him whom Allah makes meaning lets them go astray due to their kufr there is no guide for him I just want to conclude tonight inshallah I'll continue this discussion tomorrow especially I want to talk about the living Imam the importance of the living Imam I think it's very important for us and I know people of different schools of thought they listen to us and you know they listen to our lectures and they speak about such entities and I, I we need to elaborate this carefully with an understanding well when Allah says وَنُرِيدُ أَنَّ مُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُدْئِفُ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَنَجْعَلَهُمْ أَئِمَّةِ وَنَجْعَلَهُمُ الْوَارِثِينَ This is in Surah Al-Qasas, verse number 5. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, It is our desire to make you the oppressed, the inheritors of this world. And you will become the imams of this world. Today I see what's happening in Gaza, where 35, 33,000 women and children primarily have been killed. That army is so cowardly, it cannot kill soldiers. It kills innocent women and children. I've spoken about it. I said, if you are supposed to be such a strong army, go kill soldiers. I dare you. Why are you killing children and women? You are a coward. And I hope this recording is heard. You are cowards. Why do you kill women and children? But Allah says they are oppressed. I have a living Imam who is a witness. And when he rises, he's going to eradicate this dhulam. That hope that we have is very powerful. Even the Jews have it. You know what the Jews say to each other? That maybe you are the Messiah. Every Jew starts to feel important. It's a beautiful concept. For they all look at each other, maybe I am the Messiah. It's a nice thought. Go ahead and think about it. Go straighten out your life. Maybe you will be the Messiah, though you won't. But it doesn't matter. The intadhar the desire to have a messiah al masih who will come and establish justice is within the framework of god's incredible system if you and i constantly want justice on earth don't you agree that you and i will only practice justice that's the beauty end result so having this desire you know and the coming of the Imam that they say when Imam Sahib Zaman was born, when Imam Hassan al Askari held him on his lap, this little baby was reading Wanuridu and Namunna al Ladinas. Imam Hassan Askari was teary eyed for this little child was reciting exactly why he was put on this earth. 
and he's going to do it. And it's not something that's fictitious with all due respect. Study even atheists who demand justice. I had an atheist professor and I said, if your loved one gets killed, would you demand justice? She's a professor. She said, yes, I will. I said, based on your argument that there's no life after death and we all become nothing, I think your exercise is in futility for you're going in front of the judge arguing about somebody who doesn't exist. And she looked at me. I said, how dare you insist on justice when justice ceases to exist? Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. <laughs> mashallah, mashallah, very nice. A good ending to this. Allah in the Quran, and I'll finish this, mentions a beautiful verse in Surah Anbiya as a conclusion. I will continue to talk about Imam Sa'ad Zaman, inshallah. Allah says, Awalam yara alladhina kafaru anna samawati wal arda kanata ratqan fa fataqnahuma wa ja'alna min al ma'i kulla shay'in hay afala yu'minun when I read this verse in the university, I cried because I was studying molecular science, I was studying physics, I was studying, you know, DNA recombinant. I said, Subhanallah, how can this verse be in this Quran? It is bold, it is straightforward, it's a daring statement. 14 centuries ago, my Prophet made God through his mouth, made such a comment? This is incredible. Allah says, do the disbelievers not see that the earth and sky was once one and we opened it? And that we made all living things out of water. Do they still not believe? Now as a scientist coming from the world of science, when we study the Big Bang exp expansion, they named it Big Bang because when the scientists said, oh, you mean like the universe started like an explosion, like a Big Bang, eh? They were actually making fun of it. Hence the name Big Bang became the name, the Big Bang Theory. Now when you have a bang, meaning a bomb, an explosion, what happens? You have high order to high disorder. You know, when you blow something up, everything is scattered, there's no order. But the universe wasn't like that. When it opened up, the order continued to remain in order. So the Quran is right. It didn't say we blew it, we opened it. Wow, when I read this, I said, this is real science. What I'm being taught in school is conjectural nonsense science. This is real. And when scientists today send probes into space, searching for the existence of H2O, water, for they know wherever there is water, there's potential life, and we are seeking life on other planets. Allah subhanahu wa We made all living things out of water. Do you still not believe? I swear my heart just palpitated to such a level. I said, my Lord, you have caressed me from the world of science and told me how beautiful the shifa is of this book, that you have strengthened my faith. Even when I debated the atheists, I recited this verse and I said, what do you say? And they were perplexed and they started to throw wool over my eyes because they didn't know what to say. I said, you see, God speaks the truth because if the Quran were to speak untrue, it would have to retract for 14 centuries, while we are exposing more and more of the secrets of science, the Quran keeps being ahead of the pack and saying, Allah says, I created this universe. I know more science than any science you will ever know. And do you think I will misguide you? So let us grab on to this book that guides us to the highest moral stations, but it also stabilizes us from the scientific, physical, social, economic systems and tells us this book is a shifa. May Allah bless us all in this month of Ramadan. I'm truly sad that we're going to lose this month. I really feel like when we sit there and do our iftar, I say, what a blessing. We're all sitting together, breaking fast, eating bread together. What a blessing. The rest of the 11 months, we'll all be busy in our woodworks and we'll meet each other maybe once in a while. What a blessing that for 30 nights, we've had this golden opportunity. Please, brothers and sisters, glorify Allah. Bask in its glory. And thank God, just like Imam Zainul Abideen in Sahih Fasad Jadiyah, he's begging Allah that please give me many more years of this Ramadan 
while you're going to leave it in this one. But Allah says, I will give you Ramadan, continue with it after these 30 days. May Allah give us the tawfiq, inshallah, we will continue to do this. And I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for people who've established these programs, who've established these facilities, places where we can congregate, we can park our fancy cars on a nice parking lot, come in here and pray on this magnificent carpet with the lighting, hmm? with the sound system, and the food that everybody prepares every single day. This is ibadah, this is Islam. Most people don't have it. You and I are highly gifted. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbana nakhfir lana wa likhwanina alladhina sabakuna bil iman. Wa la taj'al fi qulubina ghillan lilladhina amanu. ربنا إنك رؤوف الرحيم اللهم إنا نرغب إليك في دولة كريمة تعز بها الإسلام وأهله وتذل بها النفاق وأهله وتجعلنا فيها من الدعاة لا تعتك والقادة لا سبيلك وترزقنا بها كرامة الدنيا والآخرة وآخر الدعوان الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا رسول الله السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين والسيد الوسيم السلام عليك يا فاطمة الزهراء السلام عليك يا خديجة الكبرى السلام عليك يا حسن المتبع السلام عليك يا عبد الله الحسين وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك وناخت برحلك عليكم مني جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبكي الليل والنار ولا جعل الله آخر الأحد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين السلام عليكم يا عيمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجافر بن محمد وموسى بن جافر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي السلام عليك يا حجة الله يا ابن الحسن يا صاحب الزمان أجل الله لك ما وعدك من الناس وذهور الأم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في عظي الساء وفي كل ساء وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعنا حتى تسكنه أرضك توا وتمتع في عطيلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراح